Yeah, pretty much. Like, like there's Avenger. We already kind of know what's going on for Avengers Two. That's not coming out till next year. And past that, they have Captain America Three, Thor Three, possibly a Guardians Two, mm-hmm. all on the horizon. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't seem like DC or Warner Bros. has a plan for their movies at all. The problem is they're like eight years behind on making a plan to to make something on on the on the level of what uh uh you know Marvel has been able to accomplish here with the Avengers. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, and I think there's another difference too, is we're talking about like characters. You know, we've talked about this in the past in the show. Characters like Batman and Superman are money makers and icons. You know that everybody recognizes versus like Marvel really took the sleeper heroes. Like everybody knew about the Avengers. Everybody knows about Captain America, but who got excited about Captain America and Iron Man before, uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Showed up. Right. Okay. Well, I was going to say, once they signed Downey, I got very excited about Iron Man. Yeah, exactly. Right. They just kind of came out of nowhere. This is like if DC took, I don't know, Teen Titans, which is something that's not quite oh, as iconic, sure, and made them what the Avengers like are that. today. What's that? Don't play with my heartstrings like that. I would <laughs> love to see a Teen Titans movie. Well, hopefully, that, that, if they don't screw cool this too. up, you know. What's that, Malengo? No, I think a Teen Titans movie would be really cool. I think the problem with Warner Brothers... I mean, like, this Lego movie was a Warner Brothers uh, IP. So I think the, the interesting thing is, like... Um, Somebody noted on one of the podcasts I listened to that Warner Brothers basically doesn't have their house in order. No. So a lot of their IPs and, you know, they're, I think they're just trying to, like, organize something to compete with the success of Marvel. But if you take their, like, individual, like, uh, IPs, something that is original, it has great success. I mean, opening box office day, the Lego movie did better than... Uh, than frozen. I just feel like I just feel like your Batman and your Supermans are like so big they they're afraid to misstep with them. Here, so they, here's they the thing overcompensate. That me. What's that? Here's the thing that bothers me about the Warner Bros. stuff. They have two ways they could go with this. And they're both very, very easy ways to do it. Last year or two years ago, they released Dark Knight Returns animated. Part mm-hmm. one and part two. Mm-hmm. You could have made all that at the same time and released it as a full-length feature. And it would have killed. Yeah. It would have absolutely killed because it was really, really good. Like, it had Batman, it had Joker, it had Two-Face, it had the Mutants, it had Robin. But I like, feel it had like... everything you need. I feel like they're not going to jump in that. And I think when you look at the... And I think when you look at the financials, I think it makes sense for them to do it on DVD... Um, but you gotta think they have, they have experimented before with pushing these things straight to theater, Batman mask of the phantasm. Yeah, I know but it's not, was, but, but, but I, and I know 90s. it wasn't a good example and I, and it did what it did, but I think when you ask somebody at Warner brothers, you know, Hey, why don't we just put this out in the theater? They'll say, well, Batman mask of the phantasm didn't do good in the nineties. So we're not going to do it now. And that's the problem because there's this long tooth mentality and people don't know how to kind of reinvent stuff. That's why you have to shove Batman off to uh, legendary and, and, and all those guys uh, to do something different, you know, to take it out. These guys, you know, Christopher Nolan got enough going on that he could, he could talk them into, Hey, let me do something with Batman over here without you guys messing with it. And we got what we got, which is the best DC based comic book movie uh, since Superman one. I think. Yeah, I'll yeah. agree. I'll agree with that. But mm-hmm. I mean, I guess time only time will tell. You yeah. know what? Yeah. What happens with Warner Brothers? I mean, I do. I will say, and I, I think you guys would both agree. It's kind of sad that the uh, movie releases we get that are fully animated from Warner Brothers are amazing storylines and story mm-hmm. plots. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of weird that they can't translate that to the big screen mm-hmm. besides yeah. Batman. Hey. So, yeah. And I know you got another news item, but can we touch on that? Because I know Mike and I have both seen uh, Justice League War in this last week. Yep. I was, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, one other thing on I was going to say about the live action. Yeah, go ahead. Um, they, ha- like, it's weird that Marvel is so far ahead of them considering DC, ha- DC and Warner Bros., has the advantage of literally having their entire their entire catalog of characters to pull from. 
Yeah. Like, they can literally make any movie they want with any DC character. They could just do a Nightwing movie. <laughs> they could just do a Nightwing movie, like, in Bloodhaven, and it doesn't matter. They could do the Teen Titans. They could do anything. Like, they could do Young Justice. They could literally do any cast of characters they want. Whereas Marvel, you can't have Spider-Man in the Avengers movie. You can't have Wolverine in the Avengers movie. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's a successful X-Men franchise. There's a successful Spider-Man franchise. Two of them, in fact. And they have the Marvel movie universe proper. Yeah. Like, that is unreal to me that DC can't pull it together, whereas Marvel doesn't even have arguably their two biggest draws in Spider-Man Wolverine. Yeah, exactly. So, but, but just...